Welcome to another Opta Planner video. Uh, this time we'll be looking at a sneak preview of the Opta Planner workbench. This is still uh, very early development, but uh, I'd just like to give you a taste of, of what's going on. Um, so uh, before we uh, actually look at the workbench itself, uh, let's take a quick look of uh, what the workbench is. So uh, if you look at the key projects, we have three projects, the, the Drools rule engine, we have the Opta Planner uh, optimization engine and we have the JBPM workflow engine. Now for both rules and for JBPM we have a workbench which allows you to manage those the assets for those uh, for example for the rules or for the workflows um, in a workbench in a web application um, so and so you can publish them to an execution server. Now of course that's a critical bit missing for uh, Opta Planner. We don't have an Opta Planner workbench yet and um, this is something that we're thinking of uh, building actually. So a little bit information on what the workbench would do. It's basically a web app that allows you to define the domain. So for example, uh, which I'll be doing today is define a cloud balancing uh, problem where we have to assign processes to computers, right? And then you can define the score function in there. And once that's done, then um, you this will the workbench which is a web app uh, which is a server actually will deploy a k jar uh, this is just a jar with some some metadata into it uh, to an execution server an execution server will then uh, run this uh, solver um, um, run this problem on uh, multiple uh, nodes right and uh, in the cloud of course and it will run multiple solvers uh, on one node usually the number of uh, threads on there of course we're, we're, we still have to build the execution server too but again we can reuse much of the rules and jbpm uh, plumbing there to, to to speed up the development and um, then this exposes a rest service to which you can post your uh, optimization problems and which will solve them then of course right so let's suppose you have a problem right here. Uh, so here we have a problem where we have two computers and we have five, uh, four processes. We need to decide which process gets assigned to which pro computer. So we submit this to the REST service as a XML or JSON or whatever, right? We can we can implement other um, uh, other format types later on too. And then um, these get uh, then the execution server gives you a solution back. And in this case, for example, it tells you that you should put a purple and the yellow one on the first computer and the green and the uh, blue process on the second computer, right? So, and of course, this kind of problem that we are sending towards the execution server can uh, should not necessarily be this kind of problem. Right? It can be a, a nurse rostering problem. Uh, it can be a vehicle routing problem. It can be a, a job shop scheduling problem. Uh, anything basically, right? That Opta Planner can handle. Um, and of course, the nice thing is then, if you go back to the workbench, you can start tweaking the, the score uh, function and so forth. And you can again deploy this. And then of course, um, the execution server will actually solve according to these new, uh, to these new uh, settings, of course, right? And, and that's, uh, that's basically the, the iterative development you can do uh, with the workbench and the execution server uh, once it's built, of course, right? So let's take a look at uh, what we have in, what we have in the prototype. So um, thanks to uh, Walter, Tony, and uh, Michael, uh, we have they quickly built a, a prototype just to see how uh, and with the in what direction we can we can uh, work. So it's very very much a prototype yet. I, I we might not even uh, should not even name it that at this point in time, but um, I can show the basic things at least. So let's try that. Uh, let's try to create a new uh, project and let's call it uh, cloud uh, balancing uh, 2 because I've already created an, an early one, right? So cloud balancing 2, uh, we can, of course, we don't, we can do it like this. Here we go. And uh, we'll give it the group ID is, uh, is just, uh, uh, yeah, the demo is good actually. Um, artifact ID, here we go. Okay, so now we've created a project. Uh, let's take a look at that project. So here we have it, that's the project. So in this new project, let's create a new data object. So um, first thing we have is we have computers, right? These are the, a part of our problem. So let's make the data object computer, here we go. And we are going to add a field here. Uh, the first field we're going to add is CPU power. So every computer has a number, has an amount of CPU power, right? So let's add that. That's a number. 
Uh, you also have some memory, some RAM memory, right? So let's add that too. Here we go. Uh, let's add the network bandwidth. All right, here we go. We're going to continue. And then, of course, let's add the cost, the maintenance cost that we have to pay every month for this computer, right? So the goal is uh, to, of course, the soft score that we want to uh, uh, goal is to minimize that cost, the number of computers that we use, right? So this is, by the way, the typical example, the quick start example in the planner manual. So let's, uh, like I said, this is a development version. We're still uh, playing with UI a bit. So what you can see here, we have a computer, we have the CPU power, the memory, the network bandwidth, and the costs nicely, and they're all ends, right? Okay, so let's save this. This is the computer. Computer class, all right. Great, so let's make another class now, uh, and a new class, and let's call this the, pro and this is the process class, right? So we need to decide which process gets assigned to which computer, right? So, okay, we make the process class. Uh, let's add some fields on this. Uh, so it requires required memory, of course. Uh, let's first do CPU power. Oh, it doesn't really matter in which order we do them, of course, but uh, I'd like to be consistent here. Um, and then, of course, required uh, memory. So each process uh, requires some CPU, some memory, and uh, of course, some bandwidth, right? Uh, network bandwidth. And we'll have to then make sure that some of those actually, um, of all the processes on one computer, is less than, than the total capacity of that computer, right? Okay, so we have those three fields. Uh, those are pretty normal fields, nothing special there. But uh, let's just, uh, now we also need to add one special field, which is the, the computer, right? And the computer is of type computer, right? So um, this is the, basically, this is what OptaPlayer needs to decide uh, for each process, which is the computer for that process. Okay, so, um, the next thing we need, of course, OptaPlayer needs to know what it can change. So uh, if we click on the process class, we have to tell OptaPlanner that he can play with that class. He can change that class, right? So we have to tell him this is actually a planning entity. So we say, okay, this is a planning entity. Great. And of course, once you have a planning entity and uh, I should refresh again, this is a development version. Um, we can actually look at the computer field and we can on the computer field we can say okay this is what changes during planning so what we can do is here is you can say this is a planning variable and uh, we need to add a range too so let's say the computer range here and uh, that's basically it and we can save this right and again I'll refresh just to be sure um, so this is the process class Great, so now we have a computer class and we have a process class, right? Uh, great, so next thing we need is of course a solver configuration, right? So a solver configuration, here we go, uh, cloud balancing solver config, right? Uh, let's do this, let's pick it, put it in the demo, of, let's do it in the demo to whatever, right? And um, in this and here we can choose uh, the solver configuration. So what do we need for solver configuration? Of course, we need to define the score, um, the score type. So uh, the default is of course hard and soft score. This is what you, most users use. Um, then of course, we'll have to plug in the, the score DRLs, which you can then of course edit here with the guided rule editor uh, and so forth. And of course, um, if you solve by default, then uh, you'll want to set this time limit, right? If you're not doing asynchronous solving or anything special like that, you'll just want to set a, a simple clean time limit. So for example, we could say, let's go for five minutes. Right? And um, that's basically it. Let's save this. Uh, this is the solver config, right? Okay. And uh, this is basically what we have so far for the prototype. I know it's, you, know, you have to remember this was written in, in, in just a few weeks, so um, it's not that much yet. But uh, from here we can go further, right? So the next step is that we actually uh, deploy this to the, um, 
to the to an execution server, of course, to the, the unified execution server, and then um, um, of course this needs to be built as a KGR first, and then we deploy it. And uh, like I said, like I showed earlier, then uh, the idea is that you can send in um, an, uh, an XML. Uh, re, uh, so a REST request, um, and you can send in your problem as an XML, and you get back your your solution as an XML, of course, right? So um, this is just uh, an introduction, just to to, to see. Uh, now, if you have any ideas on what else we should uh, add here, or uh, or if or if this is a priority to be working on, do let us know. Um, one imp a few of the future ch things we want to add in this is uh, first of all uh, benchmarking support. So you can actually define a, a benchmark um, on the workbench too and let that run uh, in the execution server or in the workbench itself. So you can so it can tell you okay which algorithms are best to use for your problem right, um, and of course we'll add many more capabilities like of course integration in the guided rule editor and in the and in the, um, uh, the guided decision tables so it's easily to select uh, scores and so forth um, to to define if a certain rule is is is, uh, is triggers what the score impact is. Um, so we'll definitely do lots and lots more uh, once we start working on, on this, of course, right? Uh, thanks for listening.